Lupita Manana, Chapter 2 As poor as they were, the two neighbor women cooked supper and brought it to the Torres' house. They went back home after staying to say the first rosary with grief-stricken family. Uncle Antonio, who had arrived earlier, stayed to speak to Mama, and in a few minutes the young priest to whom Salvador had been dispatched came in. Salvador remained in the room with the two men, standing against the wall as the guests and Mama took the only three chairs. Lupita was sent out to put the younger ones to bed, first taking them out to the privy behind the house, then undressing them, and finally getting them into the big, old, sagging bed the three of them shared. Tonight she would sleep with Mama and the baby in the brass bed, the best one in the room. Salvador, as always, would sleep on the cardboard he spread on the living room floor. Trying not to weep, Lupita tucked the sleepy children and the baby in for the night, telling her brother and sisters that Papa had gone into the sky and become a star and that he would never come back to the earth again. The girls nodded and asked no questions, while the boy only stared at Lupita. She added, You can look up and see him. I will show you his star tomorrow night. He will watch over us. See, Papa will, agreed the little boy and closed his eyes. Leaving the children, Lupita came back to the door, which she had left ajar. There, she sat on a stool in the dark and listened to the voices in the other room. Mama would not mind her doing that. What they said would matter to her, too. Uncle Antonio, who talked a great deal, was speaking now. So there will be masses said in the church for my brother's soul, and eight more nights of the rosary here. I can pay for the candles and for the masses, too. And it is agreed that Salvador will go to Captain Ortega and ask him for my brother Hernando's place on his boat. Lupita caught her breath, waiting for her brother to explode at the suggestion. As she'd expected, Salvador did. No, I will not ask him. He would never have me. The young priest's voice was soft. Salvador, now that your father has died aboard Captain Ortega's boat, perhaps Ortega will favor you more. He had no insurance for his crew. He may feel he owes the Torres family something. No, not him, Salvador spoke in a harsh growl. Mama said, Salvador, there is no harm in going to see Captain Ortega. The priest may be right. He isn't right, cried Salvador. Lupita heard the sound of the front door closing. B. Be behind someone. She peeked out into the living room. Had the priest felt insulted and left the house in disgrace? No, he was still there with Mama and Uncle Antonio. Salvador was the one who had gone out. The priest asked, why does the boy not want to see the captain? It is because of Captain Ortega's daughter, Tortea, Mama explained with a deep sigh. <sighs> Ortega does not want his daughter courted by anyone but a rich man's son. He does not permit Salvador to see her, and Salvador does not, but he will not forget her. Behind the door, Lupita shook her head. Mama was wrong. Salvador had been seeing Tortea secretly for months. She guessed that he had gone now to find Paco and Ortega in town and talk with him. Salvador would be trying to get Paco to help him see Dorotea. Ay de mi. Lupita leaned her face wearily against the side of the door. Poor Salvador. He had two kinds of sorrow. The death of Papa and the trouble with Captain Ortega. Salvador had taken notice of several girls in town, but slender, big-eyed Dorotea Ortega was the one he'd claimed as his sweetheart. She'd even given him a gift, a knife with the words, I die for love, inscribed on its blade. It was his most precious possession. When Lupita came out in the morning to fix the family breakfast, beans piled into corn tortillas, she found Salvador asleep on the floor, rolled into a blanket. Her mother, who'd wept half the night, was still in bed nursing the baby, so Lupita awakened Salvador and told him that food was ready. As he got out of the blanket fully dressed, she said, Salvador, I heard what you the men said last night, and I heard you go out. She handed him a bean-filled tortilla. Did you see Paco Ortega? 
Salvador's face was sullen as he took the food. I found him. I told him what Uncle Antonio and the priest had said. He told me that he'd talked to his father about me taking Papa's place on La Estrella. He said for me to come to the boat this morning. Captain Ortega will be there repairing the damage done to the engines by the storm. Lupita asked softly, Did you see Dorotea too? No, Salvador scowled. Paco says his mother has locked her up in the house. She has heard that Dorotea met me the day before yesterday when she went out to the meat market. So, as Lupita had feared, Salvador and Dorotea had been seen together, and some friend of the Ortegas had told Dorotea's mother. Salvador, if you go to the harbor this morning, I will come with you. He looked at her suspiciously. I don't need you, Lupita. But I want to come, Salvador. It may turn out all right. He frowned. Come then. You can help pick me up when Ortega throws me off his boat. Maybe you can fish me out of the water. <laughs> he laughed sharply. Lupita manana. You always think that things will be better manana. There's no way that things can be better tomorrow now. Come, see Ortega. Show me what a tough one he is. That is not why I am coming, to see you hurt. I am coming to ask for the money Papa earned. Mama told me in bed last night that Ortega has not yet paid her for Papa's share of the catch on the boat the last voyage. He hadn't sold it to the canneries yet when he spoke to her. As he tore savagely through the crisp tortilla, Salvador mumbled, Paco told me last night that it was another poor catch this time. There won't be much money. There never was enough, his sister murmured. Ensenada, Lupita's birthplace, was set around a beautiful half-moon-shaped harbor and ringed with hills that were almost always dry and brown. Not part of mainland Mexico, Ensenada was located on the long, narrow peninsula that hung down the western coast and was known as Baja, or Lower California. Upper California had not been in Mexico for over a hundred years. It was part of Yankee land. The United States, and it was where the gringos lived. Lupita knew about them because they came to Ensenada in their large, glittering cars and stayed in hotels like Señor Aguilar's. They were rich, every one of them. Lupita knew of their wealth not only from her observations of what they threw away, but also from the letters of her mother's sister Consuelo, who lived in the United States. Aunt Consuelo was rich. In the letters which Lupita read aloud to her mother, she boasted how rich she and her husband were, how often the Torres family in Ensenada wished Consuelo lived closer, or that she would send them some money. Aunt Consuelo wrote that she had no fear of the gringos where she lived. She snapped her fingers in the faces of all the Yankees in California. After all, she had crossed into the United States twenty years before, and she had married a pocho a man of Mexican descent born in the United States. He was a Yankee citizen, and by marrying him, she had become one too. As she worked around the house that morning, Lupita thought about her aunt in the United States and wished they could ask her for money. But that was just a fancy and best forgotten. The morning was difficult for Lupita. Her mother, exhausted with grief, slept later than Lupita had ever known her to do. So Lupita tended to the baby and her younger brother and sisters. After she helped them dress, she shooed them to the front of the house, where they stood stupidly in their bright sunshine. Seemingly, they had forgotten how to play. Lupita's youngest sister kept looking up at the sky as if she expected to see the special star that was Papa's, even by daylight. Salvador was no help to Lupita. She asked him to go out and keep the younger ones occupied, but he flatly refused. He sat scowling, looking down into the coffee she'd made for him and Mama. Finally, Lupita herself went out and suggested that her sisters and brothers play Los Muebles. One by one, each child pretended to be a piece of furniture the others sat upon. Even while they played the game, the older little girl started to sing a toneless song. One children sang when they chose sides for games. Pon, pon, tata, meriecito pa la pa, pon, pon, tia. Meriecito pa sandia, pon, pon, pon. Meriecito. Lupita heard the word with a pang. A penny for a potato, a penny for a watermelon. Ay de mi. The last thing she wanted to listen to was more talk of money. How necessary money was. How hard to come by. 
When Mamá arose to eat, Lupita softly asked her, What of Señor Aguilar and the hotel? Mamá shook her head and said she would not go to work that day or tomorrow. Perhaps she would start to weep in front of the tourists, and they might not like to see that. She would certainly go day after tomorrow, however. After a moment of silence, Mamá said, Lupita, go tell Aguilar when I will come and why I cannot come today or tomorrow. Lupita shook her head. Por favor, mamá, I am afraid of Señor Aguilar. Send that Salvador. But he is to see Captain Ortega. He can go to the hotel first, and afterward he can go see the captain, Lupita argued. I will go with him to the harbor to be sure he asks for the money papá earned. Mamá lifted her apron to wipe her eyes. Si, sí, Lupita, Salvador can go. You are right. You are a good daughter. Always you are good. Papa often told me that. I must dry my dress black today. Oh, Hernando, Hernando. Not wanting to break in on her mother's grief, but knowing she must, Lupita asked, Will Señor Aguilar take your job away from you for not reporting to work for two days? No, no. Mamá put her hand on Lupita's arm. Aguilar is not a bad man. He does not hate children. It is only that he does not want them to bother or beg from the gringo tourists. No one begs in the United States. The gringos do not like to see it. Mamá raised her voice. Salvador, come here. She nodded at Lupita. He will go to the hotel. Gracias, mamá. Salvador went off on her errand, frowning. And he returned, still frowning, though he had good news. Senora Aguilar would expect Mamá the day after tomorrow, and her job was secure. Lupita heaved a sigh of relief. Then he spoke to Lupita. I will go see old Ortega to it now. He looked very hard at his sister, as if to reaffirm that he had no need of her company on this male business. All the same, at Mamá's nod, Lupita followed him out the door, down the hill, and into the town of the low, cream-colored stucco buildings. She watched the road closely so as not to step on any garbage strewn along the way, and also to see if she might find anything useful for her family. Once last year, she found a fine boy's shirt that had been used as a rag to wipe mud from a tourist car, and thrown away. Washed and patched, it had fit her little brother very well. That had been a lucky thing. Today, she fought back more tears as she followed Salvador, who walked very fast and straight. Lupita looked neither to the left nor to the right once they entered the busy part of town. Many people would know of their father's death by now, and she didn't want anyone to catch her eye and offer condolences. She sensed by the set of her brother's shoulders that he felt the same.